Welcome back. As we're going to study a new thing now, as we finish Genesis chapter 3, we're going to study something that I hope doesn't come close to home. But I'm afraid it's going to, and I'm afraid with the ministry that God's given me in such a word as kick, the verb. I'm going to use scripture. I'm going to give you book, chapter, and verse. It's your responsibility to get a King James Bible and follow along. Where I think, I will tell you what I think. Where God knows and speaks, it's scriptures. We're going to look at, and how far we're going to get into it is, I don't know. We're going to look at the foolish, the fool, and everything of folly and foolish in scriptures. 1828 Dictionary, fool, one who is destitute of reason, or the common powers of understanding, an idiot. Remember that word, because I may use it often. It's a dictionary word. Some persons are born fools, and are called natural fools. They can't help it. Others may become fools by some injury done to the brain. I'm going to tell you right now. If you're involved in drugs, drinking, or you're such an idiot to go cause yourself an accident, you, you got a brain damage through that, I'm not sorry for you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows that he shall also reap. You caused that injury to yourself. Got that? Some people are born. Some people naturally become fools. Sometimes it happens by accident. But if you purposely done it with drugs or anything else to your body, suffer! Don't go crying to God for your stupidity. I have even opened up scripture I'm already pre uh, preaching. We're going to jump down to the third definition. Number three, in scripture, fool is often used for a wicked or depraved person. One who acts contrary to sound wisdom is moral deployment. One who follows his own inclinations, who prefers trifling and temporary pleasures to the service of God, eternal happiness. And imagine that, a dictionary given scripture reference. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God, Psalms 14. You don't want to do what God tells you to do? Then be an idiot. Don't come crying to me. Don't come crying to your pastor. Don't go crying to any Christian. So if you want to choose the way of the fool. And don't think when you get to the judgment either or. You're going to show up at one of them. That you're without excuse. Because you can buy the Bible online. You can get the Bible at Walmart. Number four definition. We haven't gotten into the scriptures yet. Number four, a weak Christian. A godly person who has much remaining sin and unbelief. All fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have written. Luke 24. Also one is accounted or called a food. Wait a minute. Also one who is accounted or called a. I think it's supposed to be fool but it says food. By ungodly men. 1 Corinthians 4.10. We're going to look at the fool. And the foolishness in scriptures. We've got tons. Are we going to go through them all? God willing, God knows, and God be strong. We're going to see causes for fools. Americanism is the greatest foolishness. Now you have rights and liberties given to you by a piece of paper and not God in heaven. Being rich is foolish. You can have all the money in the world and die and go to hell. 
religious religion is foolish. To get to do all your years and whatever you're at, church, synagogue, whatever it is, pastor, priest, whatever, whoever you sit under, week after week after week after week, and to stand before Jesus Christ and say, I never knew you. Depart from me. It's foolish. Education is foolish. Today we got many people coming out of educating buildings. I'm going to call it a building. And they're marching right from those school doors with a piece of paper. Sound like Americanism? And they're walking right into the unemployment line right, right after that in the food stamp line. You spend all that money for a piece of paper. So you did. Poor people are foolish. They want to find somebody who's not Jesus Christ to march under. They want to cry to the government for help. The unreligious we're going to see are fools. The uneducated. There's all kinds of fools and we're going to study them. Fool itself. F-O-O-L is found in 11 books of the Bible. Proverbs 41 times. Ecclesiastes 12 times. Psalms 4 times. 2 Corinthians 4 times. And 1 Corinthians twice. You're going to see it in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, Jeremiah, Hosea, Matthew, and Luke. Ecclesiastes has 222 verses. Twelve of those verses talk about a fool. Proverbs has 915 verses. 41 of those verses are about fools. And some of those verses have fool mentioned once, I mean twice or three times. 57 to 58 percent of the fools is in Proverbs. And we'll study that. Foolish, F-O-O-L-I-S-H, is 19 books of the Bible, of the 66 books. Proverbs has 13 foolish things. Psalms has 6. Jeremiah 4. Matthew 4. Job has 3. Ecclesiastes has 3. Romans has 3. Deuteronomy has 2. 1 Corinthians has 2. Galatians has two, and Titus has two. You're going to see books in Isaiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Zechariah, e, uh, Ephraim, Ephesians, First and Second Timothy, First Peter. Titus has 46 verses in his book, and seven talk about the foolish. Uh, two of them talks about the foolish. Excuse me. Proverbs has 915 verses. Thirteen of them are talking about foolish things. So far with the fool and the foolish, 45, 44 verses of 915 verses is talking about something that's foolish. Fool first shows up, 1 Samuel 26-21. 1 Samuel 26-21. 1 Samuel 26-21. Then said Saul, I have sinned, return my son David, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thy eyes this day. Behold, I played the fool, and have erred exceedingly. It's too bad Saul really did not mean that repentance. He's playing the fool right. He never gets right. He never gets on his knees and fully repents to God. You don't ever see him going to the temple and offering a sacrifice for all the evil he's done to David. This is one of those 
say this prayer and you're saved kind of things. Oh Lord, I was caught. I'm sorry. As soon as you close your eyes, I'm going to be back to my folly. The very first time fool shows up in the Bible, it's, it's King Saul, and he professes to be a fool, for he is a fool. He wouldn't listen to God. He wouldn't listen to the prophet Samuel. He went about doing his things his own way. He made stupid oaths. That's a fool. And he properly speaks for himself. The last time fool shows up in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 21. I don't... Second Corinthians 12. Let me check something here real quick. I seem to be... Second Corinthians twelve eleven, excuse me. Am I become a fool in glory? Ye have not compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. That's Paul. Paul says, have I become a fool in glory? That's what the world thinks you are. That's what the world thinks when you stand up for Jesus Christ. You're stupid. You, you, you got something wrong with you. And that's mostly so for someone like me and my family, where we go out in the streets and take the gospel to the streets with signs and gospel tracts and preach it. They go by. Look, look at those fools over there. You know, it's almost like, you know, the world's coming to an end kind of thing. And yeah, it is. Jesus is coming. The saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to the end when the rapture happens. You've been a fool for God. You can be a fool for the devil. I guess not for God, though. Foolish. First shows up Deuteronomy thirty two six. Deuteronomy thirty two verse six. Do ye this requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father which hated wrought thee? Has he not made thee and established thee? Foolish people and unwise. There are foolish people out there. They're unwise. And we're going to look at them. The last place, foolish shows up. 1 Peter 2.15 1 Peter 2.15 For so is the will of God, that with well-doing he put to silence the ignorance, get that word ignorance, I, I read that in the dictionary, of foolish men. I'm going to read, start in verse 11. 1 Peter 2.11, because this is good. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Have your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that where, whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be your good works, which they shall behold. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. 
whether it be to the king or as supreme, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that which, dwell, which well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. You are, to with scripture, to take the foolish people out there and put them to silence. Well, I don't believe there's a God. You shall to open up scriptures and show them. And what you show them what God says, if they choose to refuse, in the eyes of God, they're foolish. They may be proud, but what are they? When somebody says, my church says, you're going to open up the scriptures and show them where their church is wrong. Where a person says, I believe, you're going to open up the scriptures and show their belief is wrong. And silence them. Only a fool would keep on talking. Now I had papers here. And I don't know where they went. Oh boy, I'm sorry about that. Let me look up here. We must not be full. God tells us, writes to us, that we are not to be the foolish. Now, how do you know America is foolish? April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day is celebrated in different countries around the world on April 1st every year. And what we're going to see is we're going to see that the atheist does have a holiday. April 1st. Imagine in America an atheist saying, I don't believe in God, and he gets Christmas and Easter off. Sometimes referred as April Fool's Day. April 1st is not a national holiday, but is widely recognized and celebrated as a day when many people play all kinds of jokes and foolishness. The day is marked by a commission of good humor and otherwise funny jokes, hoax, and other practical jokes of very sophisticated on friends, family members, teachers, neighbors, work associates, etc. You language and you enjoy Doing something stupid to someone you love or like. Traditionally in some countries such as New Zealand, the UK, Cyprus, and South America, the jokes only last until noon. <laughs> I know church services that end at noon. And someone who plays a trick after noon is called an April Fool. And taunted, April Fool's Day is past and gone. You're the fool for making one. Pastor, you went five minutes over the service. My, my cooking in the oven is going to be burnt. I guess you'd be cussing. Elsewhere, such as France, Italy, South Korea, Japan, Russia, Netherlands, Germany, Brazil, Canada, Ireland, Australia, and the U.S., you get this? This is worldwide April Fool's Day. The jokes last all day. I wonder if any jokes last in eternity. You know, you play that joke on somebody and they died. The earliest recorded association between April 1st and foolishness can be found in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, 1392. Many writers suggest that the restoration of, of January 1st as New Year's Day in the 16th century was responsible for the creation of this holiday, but this theory does not explain it with references. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat. April Fool's Days include the Roman festival Hilaria, H-I-L-I-A-R-I-A, -I -I -A, held March 25th, and the medieval... Medieval 
Feast Festival of Fools held December 28th. Still on a day which pranks are played in Spanish-speaking countries. And Consular's Canterbury Tale, 1392, the Nun's Priest Tale, is set in Snake March, Bignet, 30 Days and Two, Old Language. Modern scholars believe that there is a copy error in the extended manuscript, and the Consular actually wrote uh, whatever it is. Man, they say there's something wrong with the Bible today. They're fools, we're going to see. Thus the passage originally meant 32, 32 days after March, i.e. May 2nd. The anniversary of the engagement of King Richard II of England to Anne of Bohemia, which took place in 1381. Readers apparently misunderstood this line to mean March 32nd, i.e. April 1st. It's funny. Really funny. That this goes on. Iranians. Play jokes on each other on the 13th day of the Persian New Year, Noruz, which falls on April 1st or April 2nd. This day is celebrated as far back as 536 B.C. And it's called Sitstar Bidar. And it's the oldest prank tradition in the world still alive today. This fact has led many to believe that April Fool's Day has original in this tr tradition. So you can trace foolishness all the way back to 536 B.C. And it, the April 1st tradition in France, in France-speaking Canada, includes Poseidon Durium, literally April fish. Oh, fish. Attempting to attach a paper fish to the victim's back without being noticed. <coughs> like the sign, kick me. This also widespread in other nations as Italy, where the term Pesces di Aprium, literally April's fish, is also used to refer to any joke during the day. The Spanish speaking countries, similar pranks are practiced on December 28th. Uh, some kind of language I don't know. Day of the Holy Innocence. The Holy Baloney. This custom also exists in certain areas of Belgium, including the province of Antwerp. The Finnish tradition is for children to lock their parents or teachers. Really? That's what America's doing today with DCF. Call the cops on your parents. Ha ha, this ain't no joke. Only letting them out in if they promise to bring treats the same evening or the next day. Oh, I get it. Trick or treat on the parents, and if they don't bring treats, you lock them up or lock them out. Come a long way backwards, my friend. Under the Josiah dynasty of Korea, the royal family and courtiers were allowed to lie and fool each other regardless of their heresy. On the first snowy day of the year, I guess that's a white lie. They would stuff snow inside bowls and send it to the victims of the prank with fake excuses. The recipient of the snow was thought to be a loser in the game and had to grant a wish of the sender. Trick or treat! Because pranks were not deliberately planned, they were harmless and were often done as benevolence towards royal servants. In Poland, Prima Epris, April 1st in Latin, it's a day full of jokes. Yeah, we tell Polish jokes. We enjoy it. But in America, you get written up at the job place. Don't tell me I did. Various hoax are played by people. Media, which sometimes cooperate to make information more credible, lie, <laughs> and even public instit institutions. Serious activities are usually avoided. This conviction is, is so strong that anti-Turks alliance with Le Leper Lepo I signed on April 1st, 1683 with backdated to March 31st. So imagine Polish people playing Polish jokes on their own selves. Oh, you can't say that. Why? They do. In Scotland, April Fool's Day is tr traditionally called Hunt the Grook Day. 
Ruk is Scott for a cuckoo or a foolish person. Although his name has fallen into disuse, the traditional prank is to ask someone to deliver a sealed message requesting help from some sort. Welfare! Ah! Mr. Postman, deliver my check! I don't do nothing for a living! In fact, the message reads, Dinah laugh, Dinah smile, hunt the gulf another mile. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, that Jack was a lunatic. The recipient, upon reading, will explain he can only help if he first contacts another person and sends the victim to his sends the victim to this person with an identical message with the same result. Ah, wow! I tell you, foolishness. I thought foolishness was, was bound in a child. Scripture says. In Denmark, May 1st is known as Machakat, or May Cat. Meow. Are you a catholic? It is also a joking day. May 1st is also celebrated in Sweden as an alternative joking day. If you can't show up April 1st, we'll do it on May 1st. When someone has been fooled in Sweden, to disclose that it was a joke, the fool says the rhyme. April, April, din de lemon, sil, jack, con, glory, d, back, jack, bell. I don't know what I said, but here's what it says. April, April, you stupid herring. Herring? Fish? I can fool you whenever I want. Put that on every used car salesman, especially the Christians. For April first, a joke or matcha, matcha, money, jack, quiet, lurky, got woo. You thought the Bible was hard. May, May, moon, I can fool you in Skena. It don't rhyme. For May first jokes, both the Danes and the Swedes also celebrate April Fool's Day. Pranks on May first are much less frequent. In Spain and liberal America, our equivalent date is December twenty eighth. The Christian day of celebration of the massacre of the innocents. The Christian celebration is a holiday in its own right, a religious one, but the traditional pranks is not. Thought the latter is served yearly. After somebody plays a joke or prank on somebody else, the joker usually cries out in some religious of Ibo American, Ibo, uh, whatever. You innocent little dove, let yourself be fooled. In Spain, it's commonly just to say, it's an ecchi. innocent. That's what the court system says to someone who's guilty, innocent. You ought to copy this down and let Benjamin Frank and all the other fathers and fathers sign this as our constitution. Nevertheless, in Spanish, in Spanish island of uh, Maraca, I'm not going to pronounce that, it's called Fooling Day. It celebrated on April 1st because Malacca was a B British possession during the days of the 18th century. Wow. I'm looking at something here. Let's look at some April Fool's jokes, shall we? Right only memory. Signetics advertising right only memory, W O M I C data books in nineteen seventy two throughout the late nineteen seventy. I don't understand what that is. Uh Decimal Time. Repeated several times in various countries, this hoax involved claiming that the time system will be changed to one in which units of time are based on the powers of ten. Taco Liberty Bell, 1996. Taco Bell took out a full-page advertisement in the New York Times announcing that they had purchased the Liberty Bell to reduce the country's debt and rename it to the Taco Liberty Bell. When asked about the sale, White House Press Secretary Mike McCurry replied, Tongue in chief, that the Lincoln Memorial had also been sold and would be henceforth be known as the Lincoln Mer Mercury Memorial. The left-handed whopper. <laughs> Oh, 1998, Burger King ran an ad in USA Today 
so that people could get a whopper for left-handed people who condiments were designed to drip out of the right side. Not only did customers order the new burger, <laughs> but some specifically requested the old right-handed burger. <laughs> oh. I could show you used diapers if I had the proper advertising. Use once. Use again. Buy green. Apple buys Beatles. In 2010, Bob Lipschitz released an April Fool's joke letter that, that had r rumors circulation around the music industry. In 1983, Australian millionaire businessman Dick Smith claimed to have towed an iceberg from Antarctic to Sydney Harbor. He used a barge covered with white plastic and a fire extinguisher foam to convince witnesses. That was an expensive joke. Uh, let's see, anything else? I mean, these things are just a mile. Radio station, Space Shuttle lands in San Diego. In 1993, DJ Dave Richards told listeners of KJB FM in San Diego that the Space Shuttle Discovery had been diverted from Edwards Air Force Base and would be landed in Montgomery Field, a small municipal airport with about 4,577 foot runway. Thousands of people went to the airport to watch the reported landing, causing traffic jams throughout Kearney Mesa. There was no shuttle in orbit at the time. Um, let's see anything else. The three dollar coin in two thousand eight CBC radio program, as it happens, interviewed a Royal Canadian Mint spokesman who broke the news of plans to replace the Canadian five dollar bill with a three dollar coin. The coin was dubbed the Thir Thirteeny. In the lot, in the nickname of the country's one dollar, commonly called a loony, due to this. All right, it doesn't say anything else about that. Um, let's see anything else. I mean, the things are just ridiculous. I'm just looking at anything else here. All right, let's see. Here's one. As part of April Fool's joke on April 1st, 1997, Alex Tate Trebek and Pat Sajak switched hosting duties. Sajak host Jeopardy that day, which was featured several wheel-inspired categories, and Trebek hosted the Wheel of Fortune, where Sajak and Valerie Wright played as contestants. Jeopardy announcer John Good did double duties that day, while regular while a regular wheel announcer. Charlie O'Donnell announced some part of uh, this foolishness. On April 1st, 2008, Alex Tebeck appeared on Jeopardy wearing a false mustache. Also, Wheel of Fortune host Pat Sajak wore a ball cap underneath a wig he later removed. Um, the Price is Right has also celebrated the day by featuring showcases with assortment of gags, which have often included joke prizes such as cheap items or trips to fr frictionless locations, or gags involved in their presentations, such as most prizes being destroyed throughout the course of the skit. In most cases, one of the con contestants learned that it was an April Fool's joke. The real showcase would, would consist of extravagant surprise, such as a luxury and a sports car. The practice is best known in the 1980s, but was uh, revived during the Drew Carey era. Though all prizes presented now are real, the prizes may have funny connections or may be presented in some comical way. I mean, what are you talking about here? You got your God, the one eye idiot box, in your living room, and on one day of the year, it is promoting lies. If it lies that one day a year, what about the other 364 days? John 8, 44. You all know this verse. If you listen to me, you know this verse. John 8, 44. What is a joke? John 8, 44. Year of your father the devil. 
and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and bold not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, April Fools! He speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. If April 1st is a day of pranks and lies and jokes, whose birthday is fathering it? The devil. And how many of you Christians go out there and think it's fun to poke fun to do your little comic-y kind of things? I've had many April Fool's jokes backfire on me. You ever read Numbers chapter 7? You ever think God records what you're doing? Oh, not April 1st. That's a holiday. We, we, you know, God overlooks. You know, he just sits in his judgment. And says, okay, Gabriel, let me know when April 1st is done so I can open my eyes again. Behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. I think it's funny if you, if you get fool.com. F O O L dot com is a stock investing advice. <laughs> yeah. So, shall we start having fun? As we look at Scripture, fool. Are you going to listen? Or are you going to get mad at the preacher? I'm going to tell you right now. Listen to me. Hear me. You think God wants you to be a fool? Why would he give you 66 books? Why would the most important words for God be, Thou shalt not... There used to be a time in America that said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. If you committed adultery, you were an outcast. If you lived in sin, you were an outcast. Your father didn't work for a living, you were an outcast. Well, not today in America. We uprise the fool. A bunch of guys go win a, a, a stupid game with a bat and ball. They get overpaid for it, and then we throw a big ticket take party. That's foolish. They got paid to catch that ball. They got paid to run the bases. The ones that did not score ought to have been not paid because you get paid to run the bases. If you don't run the bases, then you didn't do what you're supposed to. And, you know, the score should be 1,536,287 right now still playing because they get paid to score the home base. You don't get paid for getting out. But you throw them a ticker plate surprise. We don't stand up on November 2nd or the first Tuesday in November, excuse me, and say, listen, we're not going to vote because you're all liars. No, I'll vote Republicans. I'm Republican. I'm going to vote Democrat because I'm Democrat. You're a fool. And then you cry, baby, all year because the idiots you put in office. Stand up and say, none of the above. Let me ask you another question, Christian. If God doesn't want you to be a fool, what about someone who's a fool? Do you think God wants you to have association with them? Did Jesus hang around with fools? We're going to study. Let me ask you another question, Christian. What if your preacher's a fool? I want you to take the heart. 
I want you to take notes on each one of these fools because they're there for a reason. And I'm going to preach. I'm going to teach. I'm going to kick. I'm going to call all kinds of names. I'm going to do whatever the Holy Spirit wants me to do. And yes, it's the Holy Spirit that tells me to do it. Because I want you to know, I want you to adhere to your life, to the people you're associating yourself with, to what America is, to what God does not want. The Bible says we're going to get a new name in heaven. How would you like to have a name in heaven for eternity faithful? How about a name righteous? How about the name they've given to John, the Beloved? Or would you like to be called in heaven for eternity? There's the fool. He said, I've never happened. What did every kingdom have within the king? He had the court jester. Every pack of cards you buy has what? Two jokers. That's the fool. Your tarot cards has a character called the fool. Can we see now what God calls fool? Shall we just close the book and just go turn the TV set on? You're going to see things that's going to hit you. And you need to get down to your knees and say, God, yes, I'm foolish. And I don't want to be. I never knew I was doing that, Lord. I never knew that in your word, to he preached, that that was foolish. What are you going to do with that? You're going to get mad at me? Or are you going to get down to your knees and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm not going to give a name, but I know somebody was working at the place where she shouldn't have been working at. It was a foolish thing. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to get there and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm talking to you. In your situation, what you're doing, whether it be work, playfulness, whatever you're involved, you're going to say, Lord, yeah, that's wrong, but I'm providing services. So you're going to give yourself an excuse. You're going to put a, a pin on someone's back and say, kick me. Hey, yeah, this is all on April 1st day. We're allowed to do it. You ever know, oh shoot, I forgot the name of it. Have you ever had your tailbone injured? Ever have your tailbone broken? Now, mine's never been broken. Mine's been injured. Tracy's been broken. I'm going to tell you, the pain never goes away. You pin a sign on her back says, kick me, and somebody kicks her and gets her back. I'm going to shoot you. In the name of a practical joke. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I thought the bullet was a blank. April Fool's. You think God's writing that down in heaven when you do that? You think you're going to get a crown for that? First Samuel twenty six twenty one. First Samuel twenty six twenty one. We we already looked at this. Look at it again. You know the best thing to learn scripture. Doing it over and over and over and over. How many times did Jesus say, verily, verily? How many times did Solomon say in Proverbs, my son? 26, 21. <coughs> then said Saul, I have sinned. Yeah, you didn't mean it. I already told you that. Return, my son David, for I will, I will no more do thee harm. 
April Fools. Because my soul was precious in the Am I reading the right part? Because my soul was precious in thy eyes thy this day. Behold, I have played the fool and erred exceedingly. Saul spent his life chasing David. David's a great, one of the great types of Jesus Christ, if not Jesus Christ, who has been anointed king, is not on the throne, is being chased. David two times, I believe, had the opportunity to kill Saul. One time, he's in a cave, hiding out. Saul goes in there and says he uncovers his feet. And David's man's like, yeah, 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 let's go get him, let's kill him. Come on, David, he's in our hands, let's get him, yeah, amen, glory to God. And David says, no, he's the Lord's anointed, and I'm not going to touch his soul. God will take care of him. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut his skirt off. And David cuts off Saul's skirt and walks out of the cave, and he's like, why did I do that for? That was stupid. King Saul, I did this, I'm sorry. And David rightfully repented. David was the right one. What was Saul so foolish about? Look at 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 7. See, there's got to be a source to being foolish. 1 Samuel 18.7 I'm trying to find a paragraph mark here. Um, verse 6 <clears throat> 1 Samuel 18.6 And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine that the women came out in all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabard, with joy and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another, and they prayed, and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They strike to the David ten thousand. <laughs> and to me, they were scribe a thousand. Oh, I can't work. Oh, God, give me a Prozac. <laughs> Change my papers. The foolishness here is all about envy. David got more credit than I got. You want to know where you where you get that from? Oh, I can see this is going to be a long study. Where do you get this from? Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. And Adam knew his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. She again bared his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground of his offering to the Lord. And Abel, he brought the firstlings of his flock, and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel in his offering, but unto Cain into his offering he had not respect. Cain was very wroth, like King Saul, and his countenance fell. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thou countenance fell? If thou doest well, shall not be accepted. If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And Abel, and, and unto thee shall be his desire. Thou shalt rule over him. And Cable, Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother. That's what Saul did to David. But Cain did one step ahead. He slew him. 
And the Lord said, okay, where's Abel, thy brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Envy. Abel's over there. I got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. Down deep in my heart. And Cain's like, Ugh. God accepted his offer, but not mine. What's the first foolish thing that you see that's fooled in the Bible? Is envy. Go suck your thumb and lay on your bed and pee in your pampers. Because I didn't get what I wanted. He got more better than I did. Saul plays a part of the fool of the devil for seven years. The devil's going to run around chasing the Jews, waiting for David to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. You know the devil is a fool in a way? He knows hell is coming for him. Why don't he just give up now? Why don't he just go up to God and say, that's it, you know, God, you have everybody, I'm done with, I'm tired, send me and my angels and what I got right now to hell, I'm happy, you can have everybody else in heaven. I'm tired of this battle. But it hasn't happened because the church is fallen, the Christians are fallen by the wayside, and he's winning. You know who David had with a troop? You know what his military men were? People who owed money. People who were vagabonds. Throwouts. Rejects. And they conquered the entire nation of Israel. The elite. The Benjamites. Who, who had left handed. Who had great skills. There was a tribe in Israel that they could, they could sling strings with both hands. Genesis thirty one twenty eight. Here's the first time the word fool shows up. Genesis thirty one twenty eight. The very first time the common word F O O L shows up. Genesis thirty one twenty eight. This is Laban talking to Joseph, uh, Jacob. Excuse me. Jacob has worked. 14 years for the wrong wife. He's worked X amount of years for cattle, sheep, and all that. He was going to get a raw deal by Laban. Jacob's father one day saying, you know what? If I keep on doing this, Laban's going to send me away naked and destitute, and he's going to have all the animals, he's going to have all the children, he's going to have my wives. I better get going right now. And Jacob records for us that God told him to go. At home. And it says Laban in Genesis thirty one twenty eight And hast thou not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Thou hast now done foolishly in doing so. foolishly Wait a minute. I'll serve seven years for your daughter Rachel. The wedding night. All right, Jacob, head into your tent, I'll send my daughter right in with you. Oh boy, here she comes. Laban sends the daughter into the tent and he tells her, Shh, don't you dare say a word. I should have named my daughter Leah. So I named her Rachel. Big mouth. And then what happened? Seven years he worked for that beauty queen. Amazing. He just loved her so much. He got up in the morning. Oh, the sun wakes up. He looked over the bed. Ah! Who are you? It's Leah. Rachel's sister. And Laban is after all these years in Genesis 31 saying, Thou did foolishly? You gave the wrong woman. 
So what's the first thing a fool's going to do? He's going to cover up his foolishness by calling you the fool. You ever preach on the street? Have you ever sat down and talked to somebody about Jesus Christ? Have you ever tried to witness? Have you ever tried to tell somebody what the scriptures say? You know they're going to call you to your face. You're a fool. Wait a minute. If you can see, I'm holding my Bible up. The Bible says, you're the fool. And we're going to see that. The very first time fool shows up in the Bible is a fool saying, you're foolish. Oh, we've got a lot more fun to do, I'm telling you. This is going to be fun. We've seen worldwide, what I read to you today, to be a fool is great. It's okay. i got to ask you, in closing, what, do you, what does God think of you being a fool? Sing the one God's love, Jesus, sing it.